Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're here as you continue on your journey towards being a better nurse educator and hopefully achieving success on a CNE exam or recertifying as a certified nurse educator. Whatever your reason for joining us for this episode, we are happy that you're here. Now we're gonna do something a little bit different in this episode and we love to hear your feedback about it. We're hearing from several nurse educators that are on their journey to take the CNE exam and we look forward to celebrating with you on your successes. And for those of you that are just not sure about this whole c &E exam, we're happy to give you some information here as well. Um, in this episode, our content really is going to be centered around the hallmarks of excellence that have been established by NLN. And if you're not familiar with those, just hang on and we will go through those with you over the next several weeks together. This really was all about best practices that we as nurse educators should engage in that are described by NLN. Okay, so that's what this is all about. We know that as nurse educators, there are competencies that we should be following to make sure that we are being the very best educator, showing up in the classroom, and providing a transference of knowledge and a strong comprehension of understanding so students can make clinical decisions as they move forward in their nursing practice that is aligned with the evidence. Okay, so that's what our job is every single time we engage with our learners through the learning experience. M. Bailey shared with us, and we are excited to hear from more of you as you continue on your journey towards success in getting certified. That is our number one mission here at Dr. Sellers Educate is to help you achieve certification on the exam. And for those of you that are already certified, we are here to help you maintain that certification as well. There is a process that NLM requires that we go through to maintain our certification. Okay, so we have to go through um, a recertification process and we are help, happy to guide you through that. Um, but what M. Bailey shared with us is really profound and it's really caused us to kind of step back, listen to our stakeholders, and we've made some changes in our curriculum, as you will see in 2023, one of which you will see in this episode today. So what she shared with us is that Dr. Sellers Educate is by far the most informative program that I attended in preparing for the CNECL exam. I signed up for the self-paced review boot camp and took advantage of all the free YouTube educational videos. I also purchased the CNE and CNECL study workbooks. Great personal support from Dr. Sellers A+. We always appreciate the feedback. It's what helps us be a better supporter for you on your journey. We're always excited to hear about the successes on the CNE exam, and we're equally as excited to hear about those that of you that are in, simply integrating some of these evidence-based teaching strategies into your everyday learning experience with your students. This series is going to help you better identify and really align your teaching practices and strategies with the hallmarks of excellence. So learner engagement is the first one that we're gonna be focusing on. And we like to start with the practice test question. That's also an improvement that we have made based on feedback from you all as it relates to our content that we are reviewing every single week. So student engagement in the classroom provides connection with content and supports better learning experiences. Which question would address student engagement associated with the spirit of inquiry and commitment to lifelong learning? Okay, and we also now are providing mapping resources to better help you identify where your knowledge gaps are and to solidify your plan as you move forward to closing those knowledge gaps. So this episode, we're mapping back to facilitation of learning, learner socialization, and scholarship. Okay, so those are the three areas of focus or task statements associated with our content for this snapshot. This version of our snapshot is going to offer you Lisa's story. Now, we have changed the name to protect her identity out of her request. But what's profound about Lisa's story is really the journey that she went through in crossing the finish line. Remember that we are a no judgment zone here at Dr. Sellers Educate. Our mission is simple, and that is help you support your goals, whatever they may be. If it's taking the exam, we are excited to help you cross that finish line and we want to celebrate 
your success. This was a message that she sent to us. She says, I'm looking forward to our meeting. I just took the CE exam on August 7th and was unsuccessful. I am devastated because my job requires me to be certified by September 30th, or I will be suspended leading to termination of the position. I really need practice questions on evaluation strategies, curriculum design, P-values, and BPI. When answering the questions, I am confused and cannot distinguish between two close answers. Would you please provide me plenty of questions so that I can analyze where are my gaps in knowledge? Staying employed depends on this. Thank you for your help. Well, do you think we felt any pressure based on that information that we received from Lisa? We absolutely did. I have to say, this is probably one of the most profound messages that we have received from a nurse educator colleague because her job depending on it, depended on it. Her livelihood depended on it. She really wanted to keep her job too. I will have to add that part. She really enjoyed her job. She enjoyed her colleagues. She didn't think the exam would be as difficult as it actually was. And when we heard from her, we jumped in with both feet. There was no hesitation from the team. We absolutely were confident that we could help Lisa be successful on the exam. She reached out to us as her first step. She scheduled a one hour private coaching session with us. And that was a great step on her part to take because what that allowed us to do is to hear from the voice of Lisa, to connect with her in a way to reassure her that we were going to help her be successful because we wanted her to keep her job. It's no surprise that she uh, definitely was anxious. She was scared. She didn't wanna lose her job. She was faced with this unexpected reality that she had to stop and look at. It started by her taking a look at herself in the mirror. Where were these knowledge gaps? We wanted to find out first of all, who is Lisa? In our process of supporting you on your journey, that is a critical first step. We want to know who you are. You're not just a name. You're not just a number to us here at Dr. Sellers Educate. Now, don't get me wrong. We do track our success rate because it's important for us to know that we are having an impact quantitatively. It's important for us to know we are making a difference qualitatively. That's why we gather feedback from you all. And that's why we process the information that you give us to make curriculum changes and ultimately to add content to all of our resources that are going to help you be successful on your journey. What we found out about Lisa is that she's an experienced educator. She had 12 years teaching at the LPN level as well as the BSN level. We knew that it was required that she get certified to keep her job. She had taught fundamentals. She also had taught a roles course as the under the preceptorship model. And she had taught med search. So she had a depth and a wealth of teaching experience as a nurse educator. So when she took the exam on August 7th, she felt confident that she was ready. She even took our review course. And there were some findings that we discovered as we talked through the resources that she had in place, how she used them. Okay, so she was very close to being successful on the CE. She scored 76. But remember, I, I talked about how she had to be successful on the exam in order to keep her job. So fear is nothing but removing the obstacle. First of all, taking a step back, accepting the feelings that you have, right? Whether you're feel fearful, frustrated, overwhelmed, whatever those feelings are for you, we want you to first face those feelings. Here at Dr. Sellers Educate, our focus groups have told us that it's 80% focus on competencies, right? So we gotta know those competencies, but it's 20% mindset. And that mindset starts with us facing our realities doing everything that we can, right? We want to help you be successful and that takes two of us. So we are going to step beside you and we are going to move you forward to face everything, all those obstacles that are getting in the way and to rise, to be successful. That's all fear is. It's your ability to face everything in front of you, 
And we're on this journey together and to rise above those challenges and move forward. There's shame associated with not being successful on the exam. We want to help you eliminate that shame, okay? So it starts here today. There's no more shame associated with how long it took you to sit down and actually begin a serious journey focused on closing those knowledge gaps. I had it on my bucket list for eight years, okay? Eight very long years. I had the best intention and I knew I was gonna cross that finish line. But one of the questions I had was where in the world do I start? How do I get started on this journey? I knew that certification was the mark of professionalism. And what we have developed is our seven-week study plan. That's what we went over with Lisa. We developed this tool as a result of conversations that we have had with nurse educator colleagues over the past 12 months. What this solid study plan does for you is it walks you through every single week. Now, I will add a caveat right now. Week May, may mean seven days to you. It may mean 30 days to you, okay? And that's okay because we want you to have a solid study plan for seven weeks, however long that takes you. With Lisa, we focused on a seven-week cycle, okay? So she had seven weeks to focus on the study plan. We gave her an individualized plan based on a couple of things. First was the CNE, the actually the SAE that she completed. There were two things that we discovered when talking with Lisa on October the 4th. First of all, we discovered that her experience was really more aligned with a CNE CL exam, right? She had a lot of clinical experience. She had some didactic, but she had a lot of gap areas as it relates to curriculum and exam analysis. So the first message is it's all about where you are today as a nurse educator and which exam is going to best fit your path for success. Now we knew Lisa had to be successful on the exam in order to keep her job. Now, one thing we talked about with her is it was her decision. She could certainly focus on the CNE and we were confident that she would be successful or she could focus on closing those knowledge gaps as it relates to the CNE CL. Because again, this was a better fit for the job that she was doing at the time, as well as the most of the experience that she had was strongly tied to the clinical competencies associated with the CNE. One other caveat I will add, you probably remember from the previous slide that she had to get certified by September. One of the strategies we talked her through was going back to negotiate a new due date to get certified. And I talked with her about some of the rationale that she could explain to her supervisor and it was effective. So she did have an extended period of time where she could get certified and the CNECL did qualify as a certification credential that was acceptable. Okay, so those were the two steps that we took with her and talking with her during the private coaching session. And then she followed up with a complimentary coaching session uh, with us as well to make sure she stayed on track. So she was able to negotiate the due date for a certification and we decided that, or our recommendation was that the CNECL is a better fit for her. Again, she needed to pass to keep her job. So we encouraged her to spend 32 hours studying over two to three weeks. She specifically focused on competency two and five, um, eight hours each. And then she also reviewed the SAE and she, she did have good scoring results overall, but again, those evaluation strategies, competency three for the CNE and competency four, the curriculum were large gap areas for her. And after she did her work, she charted out a plan, right? She charted out a plan that was going to be effective for her that she could focus on and stick to. We wholeheartedly believed that she needed more of a consolidated plan. We did not want too much time to lapse between the time that she had already spent investing in her CNE study plan and when she actually completed the CNE CL. One other point I will make is that it requires you on your journey to take a real transparent look in the mirror. What are those knowledge gaps for you? And how committed are you with your time, the resources, and your connection to the content? How, co how committed are you to your study plan, okay? There are some gaps and that's what we identified with her. There were some gaps before she went to sit the first time to take the exam. Remember that the complimentary session is 15 minutes and there's no fee. So we highly encourage you 
to take advantage of that. We do not want you taking the exam more than once. And if you have to, we are here to support you, um, whatever your path to success looks like. So she charted out a plan for her, knowing what the challenges would be with her time commitment. On November 3rd, we were excited to receive this email from her saying that she passed, she passed, she passed. Would you please keep it private until I'm able to chat with you? I'm willing to appear on one of your podcasts. However, my identity must be kept confidential. Thank you again for all your advice and support. Well, we always honor your privacy and your confidentiality requests. So we are indeed honoring Lisa's today. Again, that is not her name, um, but she did want us to share it with you as a testament to what her journey was like. And you can absolutely follow in this these same footsteps to achieving success just like Lisa did. So going back to our question now and our content for today, we are continuing on our journey to help you close your knowledge gaps. That's what this journey is all about, helping all of us become better nurse educators, aligning our curriculum and the resources that we recommend to what the evidence says is going to help you be successful. Learner engagement is the first hallmark of excellence that we are looking at as part of these, this series. And there are three categories that are aligned with learner engagement. First is that spirit of inquiry and commitment to lifelong learning. We want to stimulate this desire with our students. That requires us to tell them the importance of scholarship, right? We want to talk to them about the importance of scholarship. We want to engage them in aligning their discussion points with the literature. That's why we require, we should require that students cite a reference in their discussion forms, right? We want to get them in that practice of aligning their content and the discussion points that they're making with the actual evidence in the literature. We want our students to be committed to innovation and performance improvement, them taking a step at a step back and looking at how can I be a better nurse tomorrow than I was today? What should we be doing differently in this clinical setting? Taking those suggestions, thinking outside the box of ways to improve patient care and carrying that message to their educator or to their nurse leader. And then third, the importance of them understanding the professionalism of the nursing role looking at the responsibilities that we all have as leaders, that we all have as scholars and the value of mentoring, okay? So all of these concepts under Hallmark One is, is aligned with facilitation of learning, learner socialization, and really the professionalism of nursing and scholarship. We wanna ensure that we are aligning our content that we review with our students with the evidence that's in the classroom. So as we wrap up on our last slide, we are looking at the answer to our practice question. So if you chose B, you are correct. Hallmark 1-1 is engaged students. Um, students are excited about learning and exhibit a spirit of inquiry as well as a commitment to lifelong learning. So the answer is B, in what ways do students brainstorm together about concepts? So option A is connected with Hallmark 1-2 as well as C and D. Okay, so let's just take a look at these hallmarks that we're talking about. If you are unfamiliar with these and this is the first time you're seeing them, that's okay. We're gonna put in the description here on YouTube. If you're listening to us on our podcast, it will be in the description as well. I mean, this is the page that kind of outlines all of the hallmarks of excellence that we're gonna be talking through as we go through this series together. This model really is synthesizing all of the key responsibilities that we have been demonstrating excellence as a nurse educator in our nursing programs. Okay, so that's what this is all about. What you will do just to see additional details is you click on Hallmarks of Excellence. And when you do that, the um, PDF will download that we're gonna look at next. In this PDF, you're gonna see described questions, one of which we um, included today as part of our practice question. And we will do that in every single episode as part of this series. There will be a question that we will address as part of our snapshot. Our snapshots will be a little bit longer. I'll go ahead and warn you, but stay with us because all of this content is mapped back to our competencies, whether you're focusing on CNE novice, CNE clinical or CNE CL. Okay, so the specific hallmark today that we have focused on is tied to engagement of students. 
So Hallmark 1.1 is where our practice question came from. These are specific indicators or really these questions that we should reflect on as we are developing content, as we are outlining our learning objectives and engaging in the learning process with our students. Our role as nurse educators is to facilitate learning, to coach and to guide students and helping them be able to apply the theories that we are teaching them or that we are, are that we are facilitating with them um, to be able to apply those concepts in the clinical setting. Okay, so these are the specific indicators. These are questions we have to ask ourselves. And then also you see Hallmark 1.2, which is uh, centered all around innovation, continuous quality improvement. And then Hallmark 1.3 is centered around professional nursing role and our responsibility to advance as a leader, as a scholar, and as a mentor. All right, so this has been our episode for this snapshot, and we hope that this content has been helpful. And we look forward to seeing you in our next episode as we continue to focus on the hallmarks of excellence and what responsibilities we have as a nurse educator to ensure that our students are engaged in all of these principles of excellence so that we can ensure that we're doing our very best to support their learning. All right, if you have any questions, this is how you can reach us. Make sure, first of all, that you subscribe to this channel so you will be notified every single time that there's a new episode. Our website is drsolarseducate.com and you can reach us via email, info at drsolarseducate.com. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time. Have a great one.